Welcome everyone to Healing Wednesday, the Circle of Twelve. I'm Lee Carroll. And I'm Monica Morani. Welcome to February. Happy February 1st. We're here every Wednesday evening of the year. We come together, special guests, questions and answers, discussions, and spooky stuff. Yay, we love the spooky I know, stuff. Meditations and of course channeling. Well, YouTube subscribers, welcome. This is our once a month free program. Also, welcome to all of you who are joining us for the first time, the second time, or the third. Now, special welcome to the members of the Circle of Twelve who receive one of these programs every week of the year. If you're not a member, but you follow us on YouTube, this is program number 29. And if you are a member, well, this is program number 117. You can find all the other programs that you've missed with a subscription from cryandmasters.com, and that will get you a subscription to this very popular weekly program. Now, obviously, the first of the month program is free, and that is what you are watching now. We're going to keep delivering this for you indefinitely, but truly, the reason that we can do that is because of our wonderful Healing Wednesday members. So right now, I want to thank all of you. Big, big hug to all of you, both past, present and future members, because you're the ones that have made these free shows possible. And what's awesome is that if you sign up for a membership today, not only do you get all of the current programs and as we stream them every week, but you get access to over 100 fully indexed past programs. In the library, you are going to find many extra things. There's videos from Lee explaining things, special music, and so much more. And of course, the YouTube library right here is growing and growing. And this library here has its own little playlist and it never expires. And you can watch these programs as long as you wish. So YouTube subscribers, please take a look at some of these great programs from the past with some wonderful guests, awesome protocols, honest, there's really great stuff. And of course, it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, are you ready? Click the subscribe button and be a regular part of this profound and free no ads experience. Speaking of profound programs, Lee and I want to tell you about something coming up in June of this year. Many of you know that the Cryon team stopped traveling to conferences over a year ago. What you're looking at right now is what we do. We're committed to streaming special programs and making great new Cryon teaching courses, such as the ones offered in the Chrysalis Academy. But we still do a few domestic meetings per year and they're very, very special. The one I'm going to tell you about is one of the ones coming up. We're going back to the most enchanting place in Arizona. And yep, you've already guessed it, it's Sedona. There's going to be the kind of conference that we could do before COVID stopped everything in 2020. And it's in a venue that is super comfortable. It's one of the largest ones that you have in Sedona and it's called the Sedona Performing Arts. Now, we haven't been to Sedona for a while, mainly due to the lockdowns and such, but we're returning this June with a gangbuster show like no other. First, let me show you this beautiful auditorium. If you haven't seen it before, perhaps you didn't know something like this even existed in Sedona. We had some of our largest and most popular conferences right here. But it's what we're doing that I want to tell you briefly about that's new. It's a full five-day conference with so many great things, but the one I want to tell you about is this one. Here's the idea. It's to bring entirely new presenters to you that have never been with us before in Sedona or this flagship conference, or just about anywhere else for that matter, in a meeting like this. Read between the lines for those of you who have come to our conferences before. This is not a crying conference like it used to be before 2020. Just say, let's say for a moment, I want you to just, just stay with me because I want to tell you who's coming in June for this event. And where do you think we might have got these wonderful presenters? Well, I'm going to tell you about that right now. For the last two years, we've been in this Crayon studio presenting some of the finest authors, the most amazing presenters available today, every week. And it's from this experience that we have selected two incredible people for the Sedona Conference. In Healing Wednesday, we only get about 30 minutes with each guest. And Lee and I have been thinking, well, who has been so compelling in the presentation that we want more? Well, obviously all of them. <laughs> but 
The first one that comes to mind for us was Matt Kahn. Matt is one of the most popular, loving people of our age. He has millions of followers online, and the reason is because he is the I love you guy. Don't you love that? He really is the I love you guy. And in August of 2022, he was on the cover of Forbes magazine. How amazing is that? He's the living expression of the creator's divine love. He truly is a perfect fit for a crying conference. And he's going to be in Sedona with us as the keynote speaker for the first two days of this event. And the theme of the conference? Well, it is the love connection. Again, a perfect fit. The love connection. Ah, the other speaker. Remember, there's two. Dr. Clint Rogers. He has taken the world by storm with his book, Ancient Secrets of a Master Healer, which has now been translated into 30 languages or more by this time. Recently knighted in Italy uh, for his profound work, Clint is carrying on the legacy created by Dr. Naram, who was a world-renowned master healer in India. Clint's book begins with a phrase. I love it. I didn't come to teach you. I came to love you. Love will teach you. So these are our two keynote speakers for this new Cryon conference. But wait, there's more. Don't you love it when I say that? I love to say that. On the final day, day five, we'll have a separate conference, which we'll call the Circle of Twelve Live. That's here. And what I mean by that is this, this, this is the Circle of Twelve, only we're going to do it live. It'll feature Monica and I presenting the Circle of Twelve, plus teaching and insights uh, that Krein has given us for these past months. Think of it as a time just like this one, right here with you, only we're all together in a way that we can really reach out and, and see each other and touch each other with coherence live. And of course, there will be others from the Cryon team presenting there as well, plus lots and lots of channeling. So if you'd like to know more about this Cryon conference that's going to be held on June 1 through to 5, go to cryon.com slash Sedona. Couldn't be more simple. Cryon.com slash Sedona. So now what I'd like to do is take a look at a quote from Cryon and ask Lee to expand on what that quote means. And the quote that I've chosen, it was given in relation to the physics of kindness. Are you interested? Well, here's the quote. Physics operates in energy pairs. All energy of physics operates in pairs. Now, in the example where Crian gave this quote, Crian went on to say that kindness, compassion, and helping someone heal is active energy. It's energy. And the more you send it, the more it comes back in certain ways as a paired energy. When you start a process of helping to heal someone else, this energy comes back at you. There is always a reciprocal energy received. Always. So, Lee, is there more? I think so. Um, I love it when Crying compares basic physics to metaphysics and the metaphysical experiences. One of Crying's statements is always on my mind, and here it is. The creator, God, is the master physicist. Therefore, it is not a secret from God how things work. Yet, it is very human to separate physics and the way things work from our spirituality. What if instead they go hand in hand? When a master walked on water, nobody wants to talk about the physics of it. Yet that's exactly what the master was controlling. They would rather talk about the miracle or the magic and ignore the fact that the human was able to control the physics of that whole experience. Crying tells us that because physics in just about everything we do, it works in pairs, then perhaps we should take a look at some other things that are also very cause and effect related that operate in pairs. Kindness and compassion, both action energies, both have reciprocal values or paired effects. And we just mentioned them. Many of us feel this right away and we feel it when we do it. It's a wonderful feeling, but others are totally unaware that it's actually a physical law of energy. Let me, let, let me explain. When you're helping others with compassion and kindness, it comes right back at you in many forms. But the biggest one is peacefulness. Have you had that happen? 
How many of you have felt this? If you would have, then you'd know why. It's not imaginary. You created it. I love that phrase. It's not imaginary. You created it. So what I'd like to do now is take a question from one of our Healing Wednesday members. And this question comes from Donna, and she's in California. Donna is saying, during a recent meditation, I discovered a dragon entity, Ra. This energy awakened a power source within me that helped me accelerate the expansion of my consciousness. Can you tell me more about dragon beings? Well, Donna, I would love to work on this question with you because I love dragons and I love what dragons represent. So I'm going to give you the answer plus some comments from Cryon. Firstly, let's take a look in some organized belief systems such as Buddhism. The dragon is the symbol of enlightenment. The dragon, according to Cryon, represents a paradigm of powerful consciousness that came from the Pleiadians. Now, it's a level of consciousness that the Pleiadians attained after a millennium of being enlightened. While this particular level of consciousness is far beyond what the average human being can comprehend today, it lays dormant in every single one of us because our DNA came directly from the Pleiadians. Now, in order to further identify dragon energy, Cryon has said, take a look at what the dragon means to humans. And so now I'm going to share with you certain attributes that Cryon has identified. Number one, dragons are very powerful. If we apply this to the metaphor of enlightened consciousness, we know from Cryon that an extremely powerful and intense consciousness can change physics with a single thought. This power is from the creator and is not stoppable. And in fact, Lee just talked about that very thing a moment ago. Number two, dragons are ancient. Now, this refers to the ancientness of life in the universe and the same DNA found throughout. And while we all have Pleiadian DNA, until it is awakened to be multidimensional, it cannot be seen or used. Number three, dragons are very dangerous. Unless this force is fully understood and used within the parameters of high consciousness, it can be deadly. It can terminate life immediately. It can destroy. So Cryon gives the metaphor of a child who tries to use an adult's power tool with no idea of how to make it work. The tool was created to assist building and construction, but unless the child understands it fully and knows how to use it, the power tool is very dangerous. Number four, Dragons are controllable only by a few. In mythology, no human can control a dragon unless they speak dragon language. A human can only speak this language if they're awakened into high Pleiadian ways and knowledge. This means that as powerful and as ancient and dangerous as it appears, this energy is totally submissive to pure love and compassion. These are the attributes of the Pleiadians and the potential attributes of future humanity. Number five, dragons can create fire. A fire-breathing creature is terrifying. The fire is a weapon and therefore dragon energy can be weaponized. So Crine has told us on several occasions that there's future inventions yet to come that will only be released once humanity has moved past the consciousness of war. Now, right now, we're crossing that threshold. If you were to take a poll of humans on the planet right now and ask them a question, should we go to war for any reason whatsoever? I guarantee the overwhelming majority of humans would say the idea of killing another human for any reason is barbaric. Number six, dragons are magic-based. 
What do we know about magic? Well, magic is simply things that are not understood or are outside of 3D reality. Throughout these many Healing Wednesday episodes, we've encountered many individuals who experienced a healing that science was unable to explain. And the entire premise of the Circle of 12 Meditations is for you to have direct connection with the multidimensional energy of your soul. And that is where you can create the solutions you need in your life. Therefore, magic is everywhere and available to humans who start to understand the power of consciousness and thought, powered by love and compassion for all things. So back to Donna's original question where she stated, I discovered a dragon entity, Ra, and this energy awakened a power source within me that helped accelerate the expansion of my consciousness. Well, congratulations, Donna, for awakening to your Pleiadian DNA. And with that, I'd like to do a meditation before we have a cry on channel. And I want to share a beautiful image that I came across. And in this image, you will see a young girl who is encountering a white dragon. And as you gaze upon this image, the child to me represents our innocence, our purity, the inner child. And the white dragon, as we've heard from Cryon, is a paradigm of high consciousness energy that represents what the Pleiadians attained. And so in this visualization for yourself, I ask you to feel, sense, imagine, or visualize a beautiful white dragon coming down to visit you. And upon this meeting of the white dragon, you experience intense feelings of pure love and compassion. And you are invited to hop upon the back of this dragon. And this dragon is now going to take you high up into the heavens. And as you accelerate into this higher dimensional realm, you start to realize that when you have the power of pure love and compassion, you become an unstoppable force of the divine creator that works through you. And you realize that there is no problem in your life that cannot be solved with this power of love and compassion direct to the creator. And so nestled high up in this energy of divine love, we now invite the beauty and wisdom of Cryon to come forth. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. We come to you yet again with another month of a subject. And that is to say that the next four weeks will have one subject, and each week we will develop it into a theme. The theme, the overall theme, is going to be the energy of hope. Each week, we're going to give you these same attributes for I want you to understand them. We may actually be defining hope differently than you do. But hope is something that will change everything within a human being. Especially in a human being that has none. There are those who would say, what is hope? Please define it. And if you go for the definition that would be classic in your education, it may be different than this. First of all, of the elements that we want to teach regarding hope, we start with this one. Hope is not faith. Dear ones, faith also, the definition of would be controversial to you. Faith 
is something that you have. It is a, it is a trust in unseen energy. It is a trust in unseen energy that you don't know about. There will be those who will say, well, we'll have faith in this or that. And if you do that, what you're doing is asking someone else to do something for you. Now, even this is controversial spiritually because they will say, well, yes, but what about when you let go and let God? What about when you have a situation where you have faith in the Almighty to do this and that? And I'm going to say to you that if you haven't been paying attention to all of these years, you have an element of spirituality within you which shakes hands with that which is a creator. It's not a let go and let God, dear ones. It's to let go and let your sacredness marry with that which is your soul and take care of the things that you can do. And we have told you what you can do. One of the things that hope gives you is an energy that actually can be projected into the future. So this is the second attribute, the energy of projected expectations. Sounds a lot like affirmations, doesn't it? Hope is an active energy of benevolence. It's a designed energy. We'll get to that in just a moment. It's an energy that you actually put together yourself. You assign energies to it, and you push it out in front of you. And it changes everything. It changes your outlook on things. We'll tell you what else it does even with your chemistry, in a moment. Think about that, the energy of projected expectations. Number three, the third attribute. It's a designer energy. You design it. You think about what it is you want to hope for. And you assign it an energy that is designed. And that then is put out in consciousness, the energy of consciousness, designed energetic consciousness. That's hope. You design it, and I keep saying, you push it out in front of you because that's what hope is. It is an energy that is not for necessarily you at this instant. It's for you later. It's for something coming up. And that is what's coming up, is, is the subject of each four weeks. There'll be four things that we will assign this to. Let's make the fourth one the designer of benevolence. You will then design benevolent things for yourself. Now, I didn't say to design your answers or your solutions, did I? And that is a common thread of the channeling we give you. Do not make up your mind how things are going to happen. What's going to happen exactly? How solutions or the miracles you need are going to be accomplished. Whether you're for your, for your health or your abundance or your relationships or, or for your children or anything. You design hope and you say, I push this in front of me for divine solutions that I know nothing about. Benevolence is what I'm doing. Number five, hope is healing. Can you imagine a situation where somebody is told that something very important to themselves is, is hopeless? Hopeless. Whether it's, whether it's the disease in their own body, whether perhaps it's, it's a, a relationship that is so important to them, whether it's that of a partner or, 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 or children, when you hear it's hopeless, what do you do? You go into despair, depression. And then somebody walks into the room and has an answer that you hadn't heard before. New information, perhaps. And they say, no, it's not hopeless at all because I have an answer. What happens to that person at that point in time? What happens is they light up. And suddenly, all of that despair and depression drains from it. Almost, it almost destroys it. And suddenly, there's light in their life. And they go, really, really? Oh, that's such good news. 
That's what hope does. Do you see how active this is? That, that number five, hope is healing. Hope is the future. Number six, hope destroys depression. It destroys it. Hope destroys despair. It destroys it. You can't have them at the same time, not in their purest sense. You get a phone call. Something has happened with a group of children, perhaps, or, or your friends somewhere, and you don't know how they are. And you sit there and you wring your hands, and then the longer the time goes and you haven't heard the worst, the depression, the despair. So many have had this. Think of that person at that moment. Think of their chemistry. Think of their emotion set. Think of all the things in their body that are going on. And then suddenly the call comes in. And it's the person they were worried about. Mom, I'm okay. Honey, I'm okay. That's happened so many times. And in that moment, describe for me what happens to the chemistry of the one who is depressed. It's euphoric. The chemistry surges forward and it's positive. And all things are good. That's what hope does, dear ones. Today in the Circle of Twelve, we're going to develop this. We're going to do something that requires a steep visualization curve to those who are not ready for it. But the subject is this. Can you send hope out in front of you for yourself? We're going to talk about hope for the planet and hope for light and all these things, but it's got to go to you first. You are the light of the planet. You cannot sit in despair and send out hope for other people. You can't do it. So right now, I'm going to ask you design for me the best thing that could happen for you, no matter what you're worried about or concerned about, there's always that for everyone. Consider it solved, and it's in a bubble of hope. And you're going to roll that right in front of you. So wherever you go, wherever you go on this planet, is it for the next hours, for the next weeks, months, perhaps for the rest of your life, that what you have done is just roll in front of you the most beautiful solution to everything you can imagine. And that is the hope that you have designed and manufactured, pushed in front of you, and you're responsible for. This is the future. Hope is that way, dear ones. It's an actionable item. It's not faith. It's something you design, you put together for you. I want you to do that. It's for you. What is it for you that you need right now the most that will drop all of the worry, the despair, all of the, the depression perhaps you might have? And wrap it up in a ball and roll it forward. And I'll tell you, dear ones, that's actionable. That's positive expectations. That's most benevolent outcome. And that is your design for you. You have a piece of God in you that is responsible for this and can do it. And we have said this so many times. I am cryon in love with you all. I see this for you. I wanted you to know how important this was that we're going to spend a month on it. Four channelings. And you're going to hear these attributes on every single one of them. Because I want you to know how important it is during these times and what is going on on this planet for you to create, manufacture, and design hope for you, for those around you, for all that is. May your sacredness be seen today in everything that you do. Blessed is the human being who knows their power and can see God within. And so it is. And following that beautiful message of hope and love, I invite you 
to bring your awareness back into your body. And if you've had your eyes closed, I invite you to open your eyes. And we're going to move into another part of the program. And it's super exciting for Lee and I to have the most incredible, remarkable human joining us tonight and sharing some extraordinary things that have been happening, helping others heal. And that's what this program is all about, Healing Wednesday. And so I want to make sure that John White, our special guest, is there on the Zoom with us. So John, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hmm. Oh, wonderful. Well, we're so excited that you're here with us. We feel so honoured and privileged and special. And we want to tell everyone about you. John White is a Rife researcher. If you don't know where, uh, what Rife research is or, or about Royal you're Rife. You're in for a treat. You're in for a treat because yes. I'm going to tell you. And he's an inventor from New Zealand now living in Nanjing, China. With a background in electrical engineering, physics, and computer science, he has uh, been researching and developing solutions to serious diseases since 2008. John specializes in energy and scalar resonance healing, biofeedback, and pulse electromagnetic therapy. Now, John established the Cancer Clinic New Zealand Limited in 2010. With an insatiable desire for truth and knowledge, John has collaborated with global research groups to discover answers to health issues. And he introduced the Spooky 2 line of products to the world in 2013. Since then, John has focused on providing affordable health solutions for everyday people. Now, Spooky 2 is now the world's best health treatment system encompassing many modes of treatment, local or remote. What started as a seed of an idea from one man is going to become a forest of ideas shared by thousands. John, it's remarkable what, what you've done. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to the show. Now, from the very beginning, um, I just want to say it, it isn't just me. It's a whole team of people, good people, people on every country of the of the world who are contributing to the cause. Um, I may have started it, but um, now I'm really uh, just a part of a, a massive community. Can I ask a question at this point in time? Because I do. Absolutely. I, good. I don't want to miss this opportunity um, to say, what is Rife Therapy? Um, what is the history? <laughs> How does it work? Um, back in 1920, 1921, a gentleman named Royal Rife, um, on paper he was just a scientist, but he achieved incredible things in his lifetime. He created a very powerful microscope, and he used this incredibly powerful microscope to see microorganisms, microorganisms that couldn't be seen with any other microscopes live. Uh, the microscope had the magnification of electron microscopes today, but electron microscopes, they have to kill the subject before they're viewed. So you can't see the effect of the microbe when you're applying something to it. And... Um, Royal Rife wanted to use machines to kill viruses and bacteria and see the effects live on the microscope. And so he developed the microscope and then he started working on his machines that uh, created special frequencies that disabled and destroyed these pathogens. He... Uh, I'm sort of compressing a, quite a long period of time into a small time in the, in the explanation. He found that different microbes um, were affected by specific frequencies. If you could find those frequencies and then apply them using the appropriate equipment, then that microbe becomes history. He uh, found the frequency for cancer or frequencies for cancer. And the authorities became interested. Now, back in the 1925, 27, that sort of time, um, 
the, the, um, the firm path of today hadn't quite been set, where, where scientists' minds were probably a little bit more open to ideas. And they decided, well, okay, let's do a proper trial. Let's get some people together, some sick people, and see whether these claims um, have any sort of foundation. So they, um, and I think it was 1930 or 31, they did, they organised a trial, 16 terminally sick patients uh, were signed up for this trial. Uh, the trial was to take place over the period of a couple of months. And um, they employed people for, to oversee the experiment. They um, had these people to count the dead people at the end of the experiment because these people were, were terminally ill and they weren't expected to survive. Um, but after, after the treatment, when all was said and done, all of these people, all 16 of these patients, um, made miraculous recoveries, recoveries as in no longer had the disease, which is really unheard of. Um, and so they had a big celebration party. They had the, a photo of the party in the newspaper with all these famous doctors raising their glasses. Toast like, is the end, the, so the cure for cancer. That was the, the theme of the, the celebration party because they had found the solution. Uh, well, not long after that, um, strange things started to happen. Um, the uh, doctors that were invited to this ball were, um, they, they, a lot, many of them started to um, say that they weren't actually there. Um, I suppose it would have been their doppelganger, that ganger, ganger. <laughs> um, and um, the results were refuted. And then that was really much the start of the descent of Royal Raymond Rife, where he became um, targeted, I suppose you could say, and um, became embroiled in legal battles um, and other distractions, things that took his mind away from what he was really good at, which was finding the solutions. And, and it all became... Um, lost and forgotten. His research papers were burnt, destroyed, and or uh, well, not all of them. Luckily, there's um, some that have survived, but only a small portion of them. Uh, his equipment, of course, was destroyed. I believe there's only one microscope that he invented that's still around now, and that's in a secret um, storage place. Um, and his treatment machines have, of course, been destroyed as well. John, um, um, how, how is it, if you're going to talk about the Rife machines, if they've all been destroyed, uh, how, can, how can somebody use a Rife machine? Well, exactly. Those, those questions are in my mind as well, something like 15 years ago. How is it that... A, a solution was found and it's been forgotten. B, why aren't we trying to find a solution and repeating history? Why aren't we doing this now? Um, and I couldn't find an answer for both of those questions, so I decided, well, okay, let's do it. And so this is what started in New Zealand and then it's now continuing here in um, snowy China. Um well, we are pretty much duplicating what Royal Rife did 100 years ago and, um, and selling it to people now. So people can today apply um, what Royal Rife applied in the way of frequencies and um, restore their health. Love oh, it. I love that. So tell us Thank about this that. beautiful community yes. that is creating Spooky 2. Yep. Well, um, oh gosh, where, where to begin? 
um, it, started, it started in a garage. And uh, I, I guess like Apple Computer, and, and they started in the garage as well, um, where I had a vision where um, people should have the right to live a life without the uh, with needless without needless suffering. Um, they should have a choice. There are solutions being provided, but they're not really focused to the people. They're really more focused towards businesses and not the individual. Um, and through family um, um, disasters, uh, health um, health problems, um, I came to realize this how how helpless we are. Everyone is. When it comes to disease, if you get sick, then you've only got a, uh, a small choice of what you can do, what path you can walk down. And so I decided to apply what formal training I had um, to creating solutions. And early on in the piece, I came to discover a very clever man who did just the same thing. At that time, it was about 70 years ago, uh, who was Royal Raymond Rife. Uh, he was a genius uh, well before his time, very much like Nikola Tesla was, uh, what Royal Rife was, was discover something which, um, which has subsequently been pushed to one side and ridiculed and everything. He discovered the cure for cancer. That's, that's what he did, and other diseases as well. And yet now we're 2023, and each year we put on the pink ribbons and red socks and whatever, and we go on these charity drives to find, you know, to pay for this research to find a solution to cancer. Well, it's been discovered. It's here and it's now. Um, but... Sadly, um, science hasn't gone down that path for whatever reason. Uh, so I decided to put on my boots and and uh, see where it takes me. And I'm still walking that path. We have um, developed the machines that do just that, the machines that uh, do provide alternatives, valid alternatives, uh, for people that are sick and want to take control over their own health. Now, okay, it started off with one, me, but, you know, when you do something that's good, other people, good people, gravitate towards it. And what I found is that I became surrounded by wonderful people, people much more smarter than myself, contributing, um, putting in their time to help educate people, uh, putting in their time to give suggestions on how things can be improved. And what are we now? We're 12, 15 years down the track. Uh, That's not the official launch date of Spooky. It started much earlier than the, uh, what, eight years that we formally say. <laughs> but it started way before then. Um, yeah, where what we have is something very amazing, where, which has been um, spawned from the goodness of thousands, literally thousands of people's hearts. Um, what I have um, realized is many of the people that have helped Spooky grow are people that have themselves suffered uh, terrible catastrophes in their lives, or even um, they've got a disease in their body and they're wanting a solution. But they're the kind of people that want to share successes and say they might find that a certain type of process will eliminate their disease and they want to share it. They don't want to hide it under a bushel. And so with all the protocols, the health protocols and the equipment that's spooky, has and makes and has developed, um, that's come, uh, I'd say, pretty much purely through the goodness of their hearts. 
now um it all started in a little country called new zealand which is just off the east coast of australia <laughs> southeast coast of australia not many people know where new zealand does but even the small country of new zealand was quite opposed to this small little startup company uh unimportant but still providing some people with hope that there is something that maybe they can do rather than just go into a corner and quietly die. Um, and so I was put under pressure, uh, too much pressure really. And I decided, well, I'll go to a country which is more free. Now, most people would think a free country will be a Western country, but I decided to go to, to uh, no, not, not Australia, but that is quite a beautiful country. Um, but uh, uh, I moved to China. Um, of course, in uh, news reports, China is a terrible, terrible country with these sweatshops uh, of little children on sewing machines. <laughs> um, it might have been maybe 50, 60 years ago, but China's provided me with the freedom to further develop our, um, our machines. And, uh, and grow the company. I love, John, that you said all of this has been created from the goodness of others. You're one of many. So talk us through somebody now wants to have a Spooky 2, a Rife product for themselves. How do we go about getting it and then applying it for ourselves? <laughs> well, um, we make the products in China. Um, just for the benefit of our viewers who who do listen too much to news which goes around of how terrible China is, um, when I go to our office in the morning and I say hi to the girls and the two guys, um, they say good morning and uh, about 10 of them will say, I love you, <laughs> you know. And they do. It's it's a it's a very loving company. I guess this comes back again to um, you, you attract people that are like. And I don't like to work in a company. I like to I like to do things with friends that are highly productive and loving, and in a loving environment. And yes, it is. I think it is work, but it's not because how can work be something that is a, a true passion? And so these girls say, I love you, and I love you back, you know, and I get hugs and everything. It's a beautiful place. It's very warm. Um, if it felt like a company, if we had board meetings and, and all of those sorts of nonsense, I just wouldn't do it. I just would not do it. I believe you've got to follow your heart. You've got to do what you what you are destined to do and do your best. Um with that slight distraction, we'll get back to where you get your products from. You get your products from our company. Um, we ship directly from our company. We put um, great importance on uh, keeping things affordable. There are other companies that sell, they call them Rife machines, which is arguable, but it, it doesn't really matter if it does the job. Um, but they have middle people that take their cut and the price goes up and even their own price, their profit margins are incredibly high. But we, one of our um, visions is to provide a Rife style machine for every home. And to do that, you can't charge high prices. You just can't. We can, we can sell our, our products for, five times our current price to match our competitors, if you call them competitors, <laughs> with the same kind of pricing. And we'd be, we'd be rich. <clears throat> but it's really not what we do. It's not what we're about. I didn't start out doing what I do for money. So if I'm happy riding my two bi three bicycles, and that's it. That's it. I've got my enjoyment. And, you've, and it's important to enjoy your life. Um, 
So to buy products, you buy products straight from the company. Um, if you go to the website, spooky2.com, you'll see um, that's our launch pad um, website. It's got everything's there. From spooky2.com, you can wade through some information, a bit of history about Royal Rife. Uh, what we are doing now would have been impossible if Royal Wright hadn't made those important discoveries. So we have to, we believe, give credit to the man who started it all. Um, and we've got our um, sales site, which you can go from there, which is spooky2-more.com or mal.com, I guess you'd say it in America. Um it's um, the sales site, and then you can go on there and get lost in all the products that we make. Because you make a lot now. <laughs> you might have, you might have seen, but but we don't rest on our laurels. Remember, our our, our mission is to eliminate uh, needless suffering, and pe- different diseases need different kinds of approaches. So some diseases are best suited for plasma, some for contact type style treatment. There's scalar, which is absolutely amazing. And there's so many different modalities. One is specifically for joint pains, um, our Pulse DMF series. We do a lot. We've got three different brands as well. We've got uh, Hiwi, Miramate, and Spooky. Um, each brand has got different kind of roles. But, um, yeah, we, we are very, very active, very active. We, we never sit back and think, right, our work's done. There's nothing else to do. We, we, we get, um, I'll give you an idea of, um, of, our, of how we work. We have a Facebook group, um, Spooky to Rife for Life. We've got several Facebook uh, groups, but this is our largest one. We've got something like 50,000 people there. These people are very active. They give advice to each other on what worked for them the best, um, different kinds of protocols or different machines. And they also come up with ideas. Um, collectively, 50,000 people, if you put them all together, you get absolutely amazing ideas. And we use these ideas to within the equipment that we make to improve and refine what we currently have. So we never, we never sit still. John, we're, we're seeing a, a very common theme these days when we're going back to the 20s and 30s and finding these geniuses and finding out that they, uh, they had a lot more than we ever knew. Um, you are the leading edge of that today, um, and you've told us a, ho- a whole lot about what you're doing, but there is a mountain of, of things, I think, beyond that and and we're going to invite everybody to go to um the uh, spooky2 spooky2 spooky2.com and i want to just say spooky2 the two is the number two not written out so it's s-p-o-o-k-y and then the number two then a dash dot com oh that's that's for the website and then you have another website for all the products which is spooky2 with a hyphen and then more, M-A-L-L dot com. I love that you began with the vision to end suffering on the planet. Lee and I believe this is our birthright to be (laughs) here in full health and vibrancy to end suffering. And you have all these things that give hope. If you're out there and you have a situation where you cannot find the answer. There is hope that we always believe that there is hope no matter what you're facing. So I encourage everyone to go and have a look at what things there are available. So John, I don't want to leave, but is there any (laughs) final words that you want to share with our community? I guess um, I think the final word I'd like to say is something which I strongly believe in and have applied from the very beginning of my um <clears throat> done too much talking beginning of um spooky that's to pass love forwards <clears throat> help other people that need help these other people can be friends or family or they could be strangers they can even be your enemies but pass love forwards and wonderful things happen 
wonderful happen things happen to the people that you're helping, but that goodness is reflected back onto yourself. And you can find yourself suddenly having good luck. <laughs> and where did this all start? Well, it came with blindly passing love forwards, blindly helping people that need your help. So just, just do it. Don't by blindly, I mean do it without asking for anything back. Do it even for people that you don't really know the background of, but you recognize they need help. They've stumbled in their lives. Give them the um and help them ra raise themselves up to stand again. Just pass this love forward and good things happen. Oh. Oh, what a beautiful <laughs> quote. Thank pass you, my love forward and good things will happen. Oh, thank, you thank, so you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank, thank, you, you, thank you, thank you. Right. Thank you for inviting me to your show. It's been a pleasure to be um, here today. Wonderful. Well, we are out of time, so we're going to take a 10-minute break, and then we'll see you back here for the Circle of Twelve.
Well, welcome back everyone from the break. How amazing was John White? Don't you love Lee that he begins that he really wants to end suffering in the world? I love and him and uh, what, a, what a wonderful, lovely man. Absolutely. So yeah. Spooky 2. Spooky 2. I love the name as well. I mean, <laughs> Me too. it's right up our alley. I know. I know. <laughs> and well, he's, I mean, he really is a wanting to help humanity and uh, it's very, very genuine. So I love having. that if there's something you felt like it was a hopeless situation, Situation. Maybe there's something there at the Spooky 2 uh, store. Anyway, yeah. speaking about healing, <laughs> well, it's time, we're going to move to the, time my next Time again section. to do what we're calling Miracle Moments. Yes. It's one of your favorite times, mine is. too. Um, you know, when you talk about this program, it truly is about healing. It's mm. all about healing. Mm. And it's about sending and receiving energy. And we both do that. Um, and all of us do that. It's something that old souls really do well. I'd like to ask Monica then to share some miracle moments that two precious old souls have received. Now, these miracles have been shared in our Healing Wednesday membership portal, and they're so precious and uplifting and inspiring. I want to share them with everyone. And this one comes, the first one of two comes from Ron, and Ron says, so many miracles have happened to me over the past few years. The most recent being a newer diabetic medication that has taken me from years of low energy and pain throughout my body to almost instantly being energized and pain-free. Synchronicity happened with a passing conversation at a football game of all places that led me to this healing. I am a member of Healing Wednesday and I find great comfort revelations and peace there. Well, that is so awesome. And it's proof that synchronicity happens at the most unexpected places, supermarkets, football games, at a friend's place, getting in a airplane, anywhere it can happen. So I love that. I celebrate that with you. And then we have Joe, who says, I had asked for prayers on behalf of a mother's daughter who had been involved in a severe car accident. The mother said that after her visit with Calais, the case managers, social workers and doctors say that they have no explanation for her sudden burst in healing and recovery. They were totally taken off guard. Her recovery looks very promising and I wish to thank this community for their prayers and energy. Good job team. Prayer works. I love that you shared that with us, Joe. How precious. And I truly believe that prayer does work. It can make a difference. And so I'd like to invite everyone participating in this episode with us right now to acknowledge those who are requesting for our assistance They've asked for some prayers of help and we can do that simply by extending the love energy of the creator that exists within us and feeling that resonance of, of joy, of love, of compassion, of benevolence and with those feelings, emotions, and energies. Having those reach out and connect that energy, that vibration, that resonance, that it reach every person who has submitted their name onto a prayer list, both past, present, and future. All names are known within this now moment. And by coming together as a community, we can amplify each other's intent that they receive a wave of these emotions, vibrations, resonance from the creator. And so let us all visualize ourselves as a conduit of this divine healing, loving presence and energy. You may even wish to hold up your hand and use that as the conduit of sending energy, 
sending love, benevolence, peace, tranquility to those who are requesting in this moment. We see them. We acknowledge them. We give them blissful, joyful love and peace. And with that, if you have had your hand out, I invite you to place it on your heart. For you too are included in this experience as well. And there's nothing more to do. I invite you to place your hand in your lap as we come a little closer to the cryon entourage. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon. Come a little closer. What is it that you think is not possible? When I phrase it like that, can you really say certain things? Or are you aware as you say them, you might be setting up the impossibility yourself? And here's what I mean. The consciousness of a human being is very much like we're going to talk about in the circle of 12. It's almost like a projection into the atmosphere and therefore into the future of a human's life. The statements that you make, whether positive or they're negative, whether for you or against you, don't just go away. It's almost like you're pasting them on the walls so that you can look at them through your life. How many times have you said, that can't happen? That'll never happen. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. And those words don't then just fall away. They're actually on the walls, if you want to, to, to visualize that, of the room that you're in. And that room that you're in becomes the room you live in, the room that you're, that you're involved in with your future life. And there you look at it every day. This can't happen. That can't happen. I'll catch this. I'll catch that. And we have been telling all of you for many, many years to watch the words that you say. They're so powerful. Watch the feelings that you have. They're so powerful. One of the most powerful things that you have is hope. Now, we have started this particular program with a channel about hope. And we've given you attributes of what hope is not, not faith. We've told you that hope is active. It is a, an, an energy that is, is a designer energy. That is, you hope for something, and that something is visualized. And that hope then becomes then manifested because you visualized it, because you created it, and you send it forward. So it's much different than some have allowed themselves to define it. Hope is not an esoteric idea that, that fleets away. I hope this happens. I hope that happens. And then, you, and then you walk away from the hope. That's not hope. The hope that we speak of, it's manifestable. It's almost, again, like affirmations. Your hope, dear ones, may be that which is a magic bullet, if you want to call it that that solves so many things on this planet for you, for others. A hopeful attitude is a positive attitude. A positive attitude is one that puts positive words on the wall and looks at them every day. I can do this. This is going to happen. Whatever happens next will be the proper thing and be benevolent for me for the rest of my life. I don't know how this is going to work, but it's going to work. 
hoped for things are not esoterically invisible things. They are tangible things that you have manifest with the thought of the hope for them. That is what we want to show you, to teach you, to tell you about. There are so many examples of hopelessness, the opposite of hope, turned into hopefulness, if that's a word, and only because something happened, or because something was realized, or because there was synchronicity that you did not expect that changed everything. Dear ones, that's what miracles are made of for you. The synchronicities that are created along your life's path are created because of the hopefulness along life's path. I want to give you an example of a pathway that's already corrupt. It's a pathway that has so many disclaimers on it. I will not have this. I won't have that. I'm not allowed to have this. This will never happen. That'll never happen. The cynic who doesn't believe it and doesn't believe it's for them and will walk through life in the dark because of that. And the synchronicities that might have occurred that would change it, they walk right by because they're not attracted at all to the individual that says it can't happen, it won't happen. The individual who has the hope that it will, the knowledge that it will because of the hope, the one who's put on his track in front of him that says it can happen, I don't know how it will happen, here it comes, I don't know when, is the one who will run, run right into the synchronicity that he or she needs at that moment. And the synchronicity will, will go like this. I've got something for you that you didn't expect. And it's life-changing. What is it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because whatever it is you're expecting will start to change and manifest through the synchronicities that you run across. They're attracted to you. Do you understand? As soon as you start to reframe that life of yours, to put positiveness in the front of you as you walk forward, expecting things as you walk forward, the hopeful things manifest as energy, you'll run right into the synchronicity. That's the way it works. Light attracts light. Light will attract that which you are hoping for. The attributes of the hope it's like a glue that will come right in contact with that which you need. That's been proven over and over and over. Dear ones, that's not faith in the unseen. That's you working the puzzle with your own divinity, with an energy of knowledge of things hoped for that become manifest because they're yours to manifest. Did you hear that? The things that you need in this life that you're asking for in this life. You deserve them. But with free choice, you've got to start designing them. See them in front of you happening. If you don't know what the solutions are, pretend they have already happened. And that creates a peace in you that then will allow them to happen through synchronicity. You meet one person that sends you to some other place where you need another person and something happens and something happens and pretty soon everything has been resolved. This is what miracles are made of. You've heard one even today. You've heard two today. Oh, there are so many. Those who understand they are powerful. I want to take you across this bridge that we always go across. It's a metaphoric bridge that goes from the known to the unknown, from 3D to multi-D, from that which you think is your reality to another reality which is your soul. A bridge which takes you into a place where you can operate freely, more freely than you can here on this side, because everything is possible. 
Visualize the bridge if you wish and cross it with me. Take my hand. You and I and any others that want to come past that middle part of the bridge, that mist that obfuscates the other side, and you go through it willingly, you're in the safest place you've ever been. This is your soul. It's an area of energy that you might not think you belong in, but you do. You're not going to be uncomfortable there because that's home. You've spent far more time in the soul than you have on the planet, dear ones. This is beautiful energy. Can you feel the peace here? Everything is perfect. You feel the sacredness of you inside. I'm going to take you to a place where we want you to visualize very strongly. And if you're not a visual person, you cannot visualize. We're going to ask you to listen. Perhaps listen a number of times, perhaps even draw a picture if you can, or find one that simulates this and work with it as you listen so that you can work this puzzle with us. I want you to visualize going through a door as you always do in this, this place, if you want to call it that. Only the door opens this time into a huge cavernous area. It's a train station. <laughs> we have not brought you to a train station yet. And here you are. In this train station, there's a lot of things happening, but it's odd because in this station, there are many engines and one track. One track. But the one track is a special one. You might say it glows. It, it, it's a celebrated track. It's the future of whatever you wish it to be. It's your future, but it's your future on the planet. It's also the planet's future because you're on there with the planet, with humanity. It's many futures, if you want to say that. But the one we're going to deal with today is yours. The things that you carry with it on this track as you live your life worry, despair, fear, if you wish, or positive affirmations, joy and love, kindness and compassion, if you wish, whatever it is, who you are, that's your track. Today, this train is a steam engine. It's a noisy one. That's on purpose. That means it's powerful and it's puffing away and it's ready to be launched, you might say, or started. And in front of it, literally loaded on the front, seems to be something unusual, a multi-dimensional canvas bag or, or something that's just, it's dripping with beautiful, beautiful rainbow colors and, and essences and, and, and joyful things. It makes you smile just to look at it. And you say, what is that? That's what's going to coat the track when you launch the engine. And when you launch that engine on a train called Hope, it's going to go forward on the track that is your life, that is your future. And it's going to carry whatever it is in that, in that bag, and it's going to coat the track with it. What do you want to put in there? It's already the hope design train. It's ready to put on that track, whatever you want to. What are you going to put in there? Let's put solution. Let, let's put health and peace. Let's put kindness. Let's put recovery. Let's put all of the things that you need to go forward in peace on this planet, light worker, so you can do the job that we're going to give you in the next three weeks. Because this train is going to leave the station three more times. Another train and another train. They all look alike and they're all called hope. This train is the first one to go and there'll be three more. They're all being prepared right now with different things they carry in that, in that sack or that bag that's going to coat the track as long as you live. Can you see what we're doing? We're pushing in front of you your own hopeful wishes. We're manifesting and designing that which you want for your life. And we're launching it right now from here so that as the time takes you on that track, 
you'll be participating in what you launch at the moment. Are you getting this? This is your ability. In this place that's multidimensional where there is no time, with your abilities, light worker, with all that you are, I want you to stay as this is launched. And now I want you to launch it. You pull the lever, the train leaves. Noisy little guy he is, pulls out of the station starts on that track and you immediately see the track start to glow another color as it starts to deposit that which you have put on it in front of you. Blessed is the human being who understands they have just changed their life with their own power, with what they can do for themselves, for the future, which has always been possible in this lifetime. Now more than ever it's manifest in something that is doable, visualizable, and manifestable. Congratulations to you for changing your future today. Why don't you stay, see that train pull away, put the hand on the heart and say, this is me for the rest of my life. I'm going to send some more trains soon. That's who you are. That's who you are. And so it is.